chat. We had a good family group chat that one, night. One in the front row. That was good. Some hard feelings. Oh, no, no, no. Nick one was, in the front uh, row. Nick said, no, that's good because Maddie needs Number one, right more here. confidence because she's right so in insecure. <laughs> that was pretty good stuff. All right. We'll take, we make it official. We'll take first question in the front. Uh, Steve, John Dickinson, 95-7 the game. Uh, obviously, Andre has been ruled out for game one, but just what's kind of the latest on Andre and, and how does this series change? He, he got a lot of the LeBron James assignments right. in previous series. How does it change if, if he can't play for one or more games? Well, I mean, he, you know, he was uh, MVP of the series in 2015, largely because he took that role on of guarding uh, LeBron, uh, but also because of what he did offensively. Um, he's doing a little bit better today. Um, some encouraging signs. And, um, you know, we've, we've got lots of guys who can uh, take on that job. We'll have, it's, a, it's a group effort anyway, guarding LeBron. So KD... Raymond, Clay, Sean Livingston, uh, you know, they'll all see time on him. Steve Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. Game seven, Steph said that he felt there was a moment uh, late in the second quarter when things could have splintered and guys could have really done some finger pointing. It was when Draymond had a turnover, Harden went down for a dunk, and uh, you called a timeout. And, and I've never heard Steph use that word before, splintered. I'm wondering if you felt that there was concern about what was going on in inside the team at that point yeah. and if it could have we were splintered for sure we were we were out of sorts with, with all the turnovers and that timeout was a little chaotic um i think we were frustrated we were all frustrated uh, at that point um but the one thing i know about our team is uh, even though they're going to make mistakes um they're competitive um and they're always going to find a way to to bring things back um, and, and get things going. Uh, experience has a lot to do with that. So our second half was obviously much better. Our guys came together. Um, but yeah, it was a little chaotic during that huddle. Steve, Ron Perchick from the San Francisco Chronicle. You've probably been asked this in some form before, but what's your best theory on the third quarter? The, the numbers are just insane. How many more points you've scored and the shooting percentages, particularly yeah. for Steph, it's like, in the playoffs, 25, 25, 60, yeah. 25. What, I think, what, what do you think is going on? I think there's a few things. I think our guys in the regular season anyway, uh, there's the first half, there's a lot of feeling out the process of the game and figuring out what's what. Um, a lot of games, you know, maybe you go in, you're not doing so well in the first half, or it's tied, or maybe we're behind and guys are upset. So their competitive desire kicks in. I also think teams tend to play really, really hard against us. From the beginning, you know, we've we've been the hunted for the last few years, and I think teams are excited to play us. They come out on fire defensively, and it takes a lot out of them. And I think in the second half, they wear down. I thought that happened in Houston the other night. Their defensive intensity was incredible. They had a lot to do with all of our turnovers and mistakes, but that takes a lot out of you. In the third quarter, teams tend to tire a little bit, and uh, maybe that's why we make a push. How, how do you think Colin Steph, when you look at his numbers, any, any theory or sense of He's obviously a great shooter anytime, but no, I think it's what I just said. I think yeah. it's the uh, maybe the fatigue factor for the other team defensively, and just the sense that it's time to pick it up. Tim on the right side, third row. Steve Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press. The the LeBron you're going to see now. How as crazy as this might sound, have you noticed a continued evolution with him in these four finals that that, that you've gotten ready to face him in, and also was. How would you describe that evolution yeah. of him? I mean, how does he, how does the best player on the planet keep getting better even yeah, at this point? It's remarkable. You know, you think back five years ago, um, they were when he was with Miami, they were playing the Spurs, the finals, and the Spurs were going underneath on every screen, just daring him to shoot. Uh, contrast that to now, where he's shooting fadeaway threes from 30 feet to close games out. Uh, his, I think, his confidence level in his shot is the biggest thing, um, but. I think uh, it, it is pretty remarkable when you got a guy who's already considered one of the you know, top few players ever to play the game can make that much improvement late in his career. It's a testament to his work ethic uh, and to his work on his skill set. The shooting is what has really gotten better in the last few years. Mark in the second row. Steve, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. I have two for you. First of all, um, people always talk about LeBron's basketball IQ as being at the top of the Mount Everest. 
You have a player on your team in Draymond Green whose basketball intellect is really high, too. Just how high is Draymond's IQ, and, and can you give us some great anecdotes about that demonstrate his, his basketball intellect? Draymond's is more like Mount Fuji, I would say. I don't know. Just, just trying to give you something to work with. Uh, Draymond is an incredibly sharp basketball mind. Uh, he sees the game. Uh, as it happens, before it happens even. He's a, kind of a move or two ahead of everybody on the defensive end. And um, it's amazing to have him out there to lead our defense, to get everybody organized, to save plays that are about to break down because he sees it happening before everyone else does. Uh, probably the best defensive player I've ever seen. Scotty Pippen would be um, right there with him, uh, but they're different in that Draymond has to guard fives. Um, the league is different, you know. I don't know if Draymond uh, could have guarded Shaq and, and uh, Hakeem and, you know, those guys, but there are, those guys don't exist anymore. So the way the game is played now, the ability to, to guard one through five, um, I don't think there's any, anybody who can compare to Draymond. And secondly, the other day at shoot-around, Steph really reacted to this narrative that it's LeBron and... 11 guys from SNL playing for the Cavaliers. Um, you know, first of all, how dangerous is such a narrative for your group? And what does it say about LeBron that everyone thinks he single-handedly brought this group across the finish line? Yeah, well, you know, Michael had the Jordan airs. You know, it's uh, anytime you have a, a team that's led by uh, somebody who's considered the greatest player of all time or one of them, um, you know, there's going to be an interesting sort of dynamic with the teammates, you know, and, and um, we have great respect for uh, the other guys. You know, um, Kevin Love is a, an all-star, perennial all-star, great three-point shooter, physical rebounder. Kyle Korver, um, one of the great shooters of all time. Um, we've seen JR, I think, last time he was in this building, he had like 30 points in game five last year. We know what these guys can do. You don't get to the finals with one man no matter how good that one man is. So we have great respect for um, the Cavs, their resiliency, the fact that they're here four years in a row. We know exactly how hard that is. Um, so uh, we're preparing for a lot more than just uh, LeBron, that's for sure. Jeff on the right side. Jeff Zilga at USA Today. Steve, LeBron plays with uh, four guys on the team who used to play against him deep into the playoffs. You were with Cleveland at one point in your career, played against Jordan deep in the playoffs, and then you joined his team. What's the difference playing against a guy like that and then playing alongside a guy like that? Um, it's a lot more fun, I can tell you that. Um, you know, I, I just think that um, when you have a, you know, a great player on your team, it's a lot easier uh, the game becomes easier and you know with our team you know we've, we're, we're not a one-man show we got a lot of guys who can take over games but um, it has to fit the pieces have to fit and I, what I like about our team is our guys are very unselfish they're all they all fit together well they play off of each other and uh, we found a nice group just briefly, Steve, when you played against it, was it a feeling of frustration? Against Michael? Yes. Yeah, it was very frustrating. <laughs> a lot more fun playing with him. Um, I do remember, though, when, the first time I guarded him when I was in Cleveland, he, he faked right, faked back left, and went right. And I stayed right in front of him, but only because I went for the first fake. <laughs> and we came to the bench, and Lenny Wilkins he said, guys, did you see what Steve just did? He stayed in front. That's what you have to do. I said, that's right, guys. Come on. I was, I was literally still going for the first fake, and he came right back to me. So that was my highlight. <laughs> Marla in the middle. Marla Ridenauer, Akron Beacon Journal. Um, when Ty came back from his leave of absence, he said that you were really important in t talking to him when he was out and could you, I mean, I don't know if you want to share anything you said, but could you tell how hard it was for him to take that leave of absence? I just called, I, I, we texted, um, I called first and then texted. We had a good text exchange. I just tried to share some of uh, my experience when I, when I was out last year. And uh, main, the main message was, uh, you know, you can't allow 
what feels like the enormity of the job to interfere with your health and your recovery and whatever you need to do. You know, I just told him the team will still be there when you get back. And, and, uh, but sometimes I think in this job, um, because there's so much passion from our, the fan bases and because everybody wants to win so badly, it feels bigger than it really is. Um, so it's just kind of a reminder that we're just playing a sport, you know, get better. And, and, uh, but, um, yeah, it was good exchange. I'm a big fan of ties. I don't think he gets enough credit, frankly. Um, but that's probably the, the burden of coaching LeBron. There's a lot of benefits, but there's a burden too. Um, and Ty has done a phenomenal job with that team, um, made great adjustments throughout the playoffs when they've been in some holes. Um, so we have great respect for their coaching staff, and I'm really thrilled that he's back and looking healthy. Monty, last question before Steph comes in. You've um, had gone four games without Andre now, and you've kind of patched it with Loon and JB and a little bit of Nick Young. What are you and your staff, have, have, what have you seen from those guys that you've used instead of Andre over the course of these last four games? And just, you know, what, what's your view of their evolution as a group? Well, they're all doing well individually, but they're not, none of them play at all like Andre. So we've had to adapt our style a little bit. Um, I think one of the reasons we were a little scattered in the end of that Houston series was we didn't have Andre playing that familiar point forward role, getting us settled, getting us into our offense. So we've just had to adapt and adjust and play through other people. And the guys you mentioned have all played their roles really well. You know, Jordan, uh, I thought, played exceptionally well in that Houston series, making some plays, setting some good screens, um, you know, creating some offense. And uh, Nick had a really good series, guarded well and made some big shots. I thought his shot in the uh, third quarter of the Houston game was one of the key shots of the game. It um, really got us going. All right, thank you. Thanks, Coach. All right, head coach Steve Kerr back for a uh, fourth straight finals. Dennis Scott is back out with us here and uh, dressed for it. Yes, sir. Feeling good? Oh, yeah, I knew I knew about this, man. It's year four. I knew yeah. we'd be outside. I knew it would be windy. I knew the sun was coming out. See, come on, baby. You Three know you're coming look, back. You, you look good. 